Hey guys, it's Andrew or Feel No Pain, and today I want to bring you a review. I know it's been a little while, it's been about a week, on a game that came out about three years ago now. Uh, it's called Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning, and I might have screwed up the pronunciation on that, but nah, it's okay. Um, this is a game that, when it first came out, I actually played on the Xbox 360, and it was kind of a, it was a thing that I was really excited about for a variety of reasons. I really like hack and slash type RPGs, and that's definitely what this is. I mean, if you think of it like a third person combat style Diablo, almost, um, I really like that kind of game, so I was excited when it came out, and uh, recently, I just don't know why, I think I saw it on Steam, and I remembered, oh, this game's so great, and you know, had a little bit of the beer goggles going on because, you know, everyone everyone uh, remembers those games they love, and uh, this this was that one for me. So I went ahead and got it on Steam and decided I'd play it for a bit, and uh, figured after playing for a bit that I would uh, do a review because there's a few things that I'd kind of forgotten about it that. Uh, may have been part of the reason why I sort of stopped playing it after a while. I did put quite a few hours into it, so... Um, not like not like I stopped playing after the first 30 minutes. But, um, anyway, as usual, the, uh, the PC specs required are going to be on the screen here. So, uh, that first, always. And, uh, this is... It was actually... This was developed by Big Huge Games and 38 Studios. It was published by 38 Studios and EA. Um, I know EA has a whole bad history of just anything they touch, and this kind of, uh, this, this is, uh, this isn't like a online multiplayer, so, uh, it doesn't fall into that category, but what it does is it does actually connect you to the EA servers whenever you play, which is a little weird. Um, <clears throat> it's required, because uh, when you, I, I think it's required, yeah, when you load up, it automatically does it, like, before you get to the start screen or anything, so that's really bizarre. Um, but as you can see on the screen, it's it's very hack and slash, it's very, uh, I don't know, uh, there's there's really not a ton of games that, that it reminds me of, and I think that's what was cool, and uh, part of what really sold me on it originally was... The art was done by uh, Todd McFarlane, who is um, he? He's he's the same guy that does like the art for a lot of the little like action figures and stuff that you see places. Uh, originally, Spawn was like kind of like his big the big names sake that he was known for. But if you ever go into like a Hot Topic or a Spencer's or um, anything like that, and you see those like action figures and they'll have his name on it, and they're always very. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know, almost Tim Burton-y. They're always very sort of visceral-looking, you know, figures. They're very, uh, they're very sort of meaty and, I don't know. They look very scary most of the time. But he, he's worked on all sorts of stuff, and he did the art for this game. And as far as I know, to date, uh, this is the only game he's done art for. And as you can see... The art style is very fantasy, and I guess that's more what it is. He has a very fantasy style. It's very sort of over the top sometimes, too, or just <clears throat> nothing is boring and nothing is bland. It's all very, I don't know, it all has texture and like sort of a, like even the trees in here, they have these like winding roots and sort of this really cool look to them. So that was kind of what sold me at first. That's what got me interested. Um, as far as the actual gameplay goes, um, and the game itself sort of as a whole, um, there are some really amazing things about it that I haven't seen before or since that are uh, pretty amazing. And sorry if you guys can hear that car going by, that's really loud. Um, there's something called the fate system, or fate shifting, actually. You play as a character who basically has cheated death and the entire story, of course, you play, it's an RPG, you're you're the chosen one, or you can do things other people can't. That's kind of how these all work. Um, but how it works is because you've cheated death, or basically resurrected from death, you no longer have a fate, or a, uh, 
a place in the fate of the world. Everyone has, like, a destined path to travel, and you don't. You get to make your own, you get to choose your own, and that's sort of how they uh, justify doing that. But in doing so, you also get the fate shift system, which means uh, after killing so many things, this little bar, little purple bar, bar in the top left corner, you actually might have seen me use it just a, a little bit ago against a bunch of those fairies. Uh, it basically stop, or almost stops time and allows you to do huge damage to everything around you. And then at the end, if you uh, before it runs out, everything that you've basically killed, gotten within so much of death and they're just laying there. If you hit F, it goes into this little quick time sequence where you just have to like mash a button to get extra XP for it and then it kills everything that you uh, kind of like downed uh, during that period. And that's pretty cool. Um, it's, it's pretty effective. But where it really shines is against like big monsters and this game has those. Uh, and I think that's a lot of the Todd McFarlane kind of uh, art style coming into play. Very big, meaty, sort of like, these things look like they can mess you up sort of monsters. And you can use it on them, too. And some of the finishers for it are just absolutely insane. And uh, some, of the, some of the coolest sort of, you know, you sit there, you, after you do it, you kind of like get, get goosebumps about it. And you're like, that was, I feel really powerful now. And, of course, all games like this, that's the point. You know, you want to level up and feel more powerful. You don't want to feel like the world's tearing you apart because there's games like Dark Souls for that. It's Dark Souls is basically the antithesis of this game. Um, you know, that game, there's huge monsters that just wreck you and you have to use your, your smarts to kind of like, okay, this is how I'm going to beat this guy after trying 30 times. Whereas this is like, I am you know outside the boundaries of everyone else i am i have power no one else has i have this sort of like freedom to do whatever i want in life that no one else has and i'm going to use it and i can just wreck everything with it um so that's that's a really cool aspect and it keeps it interesting because there's plenty of monster types and plenty of new things that you fight and you get a lot of those moments where you're just battling and battling and then you notice that you can use your fate shift and just take down a huge crowd at once or you know maybe save it up and to wait till you get to a huge crowd and use it all at once but that's a really positive part of the game and I wish more games would use systems like that these sort of occasional combat systems sort of like ultimate attacks <clears throat> I wish more games like this existed that did that. I mean, obviously, there's ultimate attacks in a lot of, like, MOBAs and, you know, um, League of Legends, stuff like that. But this this style game does really well with that, that kind of sort of, you know, well, combat's getting boring, I've slashed a million things. Oh, now I get to do this. And beyond that... <clears throat> The, uh, as you can see, the, uh, actual, like, sword combat, which you can actually use swords, daggers, a variety of weapons. There's, uh, about a dozen different weapons. Um, the combat's really good. It's simple. It's, it's literally left-click to use your, uh, your primary weapon, which in this case is my guy's sword. And right-click uses your spell, which is the little bar at the bottom. You can use the number keys to switch spells and use whichever one you want. And the one I've got on is this big, like, ground pound, like, earth-shaking, like, slow-mo, cool-looking thing. Um, but, I mean, there's your typical fire, ice, lightning, you know, everything you can expect. And there's weaknesses and strengths for monsters. So there is there is a little bit of sort of figuring out what you want to do. Like, I have a fire sword, so maybe I'd want an ice spell in case I came up against, like, a fire uh, enemy that was weak against my attacks with my sword. Um... So, yeah, that kind of stuff is really basic. It's all left-clicking, and there is, there's combos, so, like, you do a couple hits, and if you wait just a second after a hit and then hit the, or click the left uh, mouse button again, you get sort of an uppercut sort of sweep, and that, that'll knock them into the air, and you can do another combo while they, they're in the air. Um, but it's, it's nothing that's, you know, mind-bendingly awesome. 
Uh, sometimes you'll do things that feel that way. You'll accidentally interrupt a, a, a different target that's coming in on you with some sort of attack. And there's a lot of stuff that feels really cool like that. Um, and then as far as you can dodge, you can like roll dodge, which is good, especially for like um, the squishier classes. But I've got a sword shield guy going, so with the uh, you can you can either do that or you can uh, block. Which, all the key bindings are really nice, they're all on the left, I think block is shift, sprint is control, dodge is spacebar, so you just hold a direction and spacebar. Um, but if you block right before they hit you, you get like a parry attack where it knocks them away and kind of stuns them for a second. So there is a lot of uh, sort of twitch reflexes, knowing enemy types and how they attack and when they attack and what their attacks look like to be able to you know, to be able to counter them efficiently. Um, yeah, that's that's basically as easy as the combat is, but it's fun. It really is fun. Uh, there is a problem with the combat, and that's the camera. And the camera, it's easier to adjust with a mouse, I guess, is because that's how you look around. But if uh, the camera naturally angles at whatever's attacking you, which is a really cool uh, visual thing. Uh, if something's attacking from the side and you, like, hit A to turn left and block and parry them, the camera will swivel around so that thing's in front of you. Which is, it looks really cool, but it almost simulates sort of you turning your head if you were actually, you know, the character. Um, but it can distract from what you're trying to be attacking because you just attack whatever you're looking at. So it, it can be a distraction as well as a uh, kind of cool visual thing. And I feel like with this game, they sort of uh, went for visually pleasing over maybe necessarily gameplay perfection because there's definitely some things that could probably use some work gameplay-wise like that and uh, like just adding more moves or making there be like a secondary you know attack button beyond like your spells but they went for visually pleasing which I'm not gonna lie it's very difficult to to argue with that it, sometimes when you do certain things you just stop caring you you feel like you know you could only have one attack and that would be fine as long as you could still do you know this one cool thing that makes it all better um, but, yeah, that's that's the basics of combat. There's a little camera problems, but it's okay. It's a third-person, over-the-shoulder type of game, so, you know, you kind of expect that. It's it's really hard to make that style game without occasionally running into things, but it's it's nothing game-breaking that you... It's, it's nothing that's going to get you, like, insta-killed. Um, that brings me <laughs> to the next issue. It's a very easy game. Uh, on normal, it's pretty much face roll. You don't ha even have to like block or dodge or anything ever, except maybe against bosses. But against normal things, you can just slash your way through. On hard, it's really not much harder. And uh, yeah, you get to uh, you, you get to kind of steamroll stuff, and it's fun. But the the game is pretty long. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, even if you uh, the game is pretty long. Um, if you do all the side quests and everything, of course. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's a little bit of an issue, and I think that's kind of where I got worn out on it, playing it before. I didn't quite finish it when I had it on the 360, but I'd put so many hours into it, probably 30 hours, 40 hours. Um, I think that's kind of where I got wore out on it eventually, is it was just, I don't know, it was, it, it just became so easy, I didn't feel the challenge, and that gets boring after a while. But uh, how the characters work is you can see I'm a sword and shield guy, and no, I didn't necessarily choose that from the beginning. Uh, everything is equipment-based and skill point-based. Uh, you don't have your standard strength dexterity stats. Um, you can wear heavy armor, which automatically gives you abilities that uh, makes you a better tank, sword and shield guy. Uh, you can put points in stats in might, finesse and sorcery so you put a bunch of stats in might you wear heavy armor you're a tank or you put a bunch in finesse you wear medium armor which focuses on uh, it focuses on like critical hits instead of blocking and, and high damage resistance 
and you use like dual wielded daggers and you're a kind of roguey assassin character or you are light armor which increases mana regen and stuff like that and put points into sorcery and you're a mage now the cool thing is you can do variations of this you could be a sword and shield guy that focuses on medium armor so you get better crits there's some things that that'll hurt you on there's some things that that will definitely uh kind of like not give you the ability to use as well but it gives you some neat like you might kill faster but you're still durable enough or you could even uh go the might tree uh but you could use daggers instead of a shield and there's ways to make that work or you could be a tank that uses spells um and you can even mix and match you use half heavy armor half light armor um but there's there's it's pretty much you can be anything you build your own class from ground up and the way it works is amazing it's not like there's three or six or eight or nine or ten builds there's as many as you want and you can you could be all three you can even do some heavy some medium some light armor be kind of the jack of all trades master of none and that's fine as well um but anyway the uh, negatives, aside from the little camera thing I was talking about earlier, is uh, the areas are kind of redundant. They feel redundant. They feel huge and repeated, and it's really great looking, but especially the indoor areas, the dungeons, the castles, stuff like that, are very repetitive. You sort of immediately know when you go into one, like, oh, I've seen this one before. And that's, that tends to happen with games like this because they're so big, they have to reuse some assets. And I'll just go back and say Diablo. Diablo is you know, notorious for that. They reuse stuff all the time. But in a game that's this, this just sort of visually appealing, it's a little upsetting because I understand that it kind of almost has to happen, but it kind of brings you out of it. It makes you realize you're not in a world, you're in a game. And obviously you know that anyway, but it, it's it, it's a little jarring, um, to say the least. And you don't notice that too much till later. I mean, I haven't even done a dungeon yet in this, and I'm already like level four, and I've played for like a couple hours. Um, but later on, you'll start to notice like I saw this when I was just starting out, and now there's all these high level monsters, but the layout of this place is exactly the same, so I know where I'm going already. There's no exploration involved. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a downside, but it's it, it's still it, it's something that you don't don't notice too much until later. Although if you've watched this, you may start noticing it sooner. Um, but it, it it's it's unfortunate, but I understand that, especially uh, on 360. Like if it was if this was done on like the the Xbox One or something, and they had like Blu-ray discs. I feel like they might have not had to do that, but there's limited space on DVDs, so, you know, they, they worked with what we they had, and they made a huge game. Uh, it was pretty impressive for the time. Um, not gonna lie, it still looks pretty good. I mean, some of the some of the textures, but more so, like, the, the features and when people are talking and how goofy it looks, that's, yeah, that's not so much. But, yeah, it was 2012. Things have changed, things have gotten better, and... Um, it's still a good looking game, for sure. Uh, the other problem, the real big problem, which, once again, you don't notice too much till later, but if you're someone like me who sees a side quest and you just have to see what it's all about, you will over-level stuff. Uh, things don't scale to you, so there will be points, and really about halfway through the game, where you hardly get experience for anything, but you've still got 12 side quests. And just steamrolling stuff like that, it's cool for a second, but then when you realize you're not leveling anymore, it kind of gets old. And um, I wish they'd done like a scaling system. Things level to you uh, as opposed to just sort of like this area is level 6 through 8. This level's 8 through 10. and um, That would have made it way cooler. Plus, uh, towards the end of the game, things would have probably been much harder. And uh, like I said, the difficulty thing is kind of an issue. It definitely needed... Uh, tweaked but 
Um, that's kind of all I have for this. Overall, it's a good game. I, I really do enjoy it. I enjoyed it the first time. I'm enjoying playing it again. Uh, especially those moments, which actually you're going to see come up on this, where I uh, go fate shift on this guy and kind of wreck him. It's, it, it's pretty amazing. It just felt good to do. Um, but I guess I should uh, finish this off by saying... Uh, this is $19.99 on Steam, probably about the same if you get it at GameStop or something for a uh, console, and uh, $39.99 on Steam with the DLC included. I didn't get the DLC just because I haven't played far enough in yet uh, to know if I'm going to want it, but I hear it's really good. Um, I've heard nothing but positive reviews for that, so um, really that's sort of just a matter of whatever you want to do. But either way, that's not a bad price for this game. It's it's definitely worth the 20 uh, if you ask me. And it is the kind of game where you save, like, manually, which is rare anymore. Everything auto-saves you now. So you save manually, so you can actually, like, pick it up and drop it however you want. You can play for 20 minutes to save your game out in the middle of nowhere. You don't have to go back to town and talk to someone or complete a quest for it to save or anything like that. So it's, uh... It is the kind of game where if you're you're on a time crunch and you want to just like slash through a few things every once in a while, it's cool. Um, it is also the controls are some of the best. Uh, I think this does play better with a controller, and I did play it a little bit with a controller on the PC and plugged in my Xbox 360 like Windows controller, and it does play better. Uh, for the video, I was using mouse and keyboard because I know not everyone has one of those, so I figured I'd I'd show you sort of the best I could do with mouse and keyboard. The biggest problem is the dodge rolling and such, uh, and like blocking things that are to your side or to your back. Um, it's difficult with only four directions as opposed to a, um, an analog stick that you can use multiple directions. But um, either way, it, it's still some of the best keyboard controls I've seen for games like this. And it's all one hand, left side of the keyboard, and... Uh, and mouse and it feels good um, so if you're interested if it looks cool if you think you'll like it check it out it's 20 bucks on Steam that's not bad uh, you'll probably get a solid 20 or 30 hours out of it 40 maybe if you like it um, more if you get the DLC so I guess uh, that's really all I got for you guys I hope you enjoyed it I'm gonna be doing more reviews I know I keep saying that but I've been uh, stressed for time so I've been putting out a lot of Diablo 3 stuff just kinda like to fill in hope you guys like that stuff too but yeah uh, this has been Andrew uh, feel no pain and I will see you guys in the next video